he's the bravest man I, I I think I've I've ever seen ride a horse. He just goes full pelt, wing, wing, wing. Hello and welcome back to another video here on the Let's Talk Racing channel and another one of our collection of big race previews for the Cheltenham Festival. We really hope you enjoyed the Champion Hurdle preview a couple of days ago and we really appreciate all the support that we've been getting on these videos recently. We've been getting great likes, great views and if you are new around here and you do enjoy the dynamic between myself and Josh, be sure to hit that like button. It's great when we see those likes going in. It gives us a bit more incentive to uh, be a little bit more productive with ourselves going forward uh, into the Cheltenham month and of course subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy it and you are new around here as well. We're moving on to the Ryanair chase today which is one of the better grade ones and one of the most competitive grade ones I suspect of the week. Josh, good race, has been won by some very good horses over the years, you must be excited. Absolutely, unlike um, some of the the other big races that we will preview, there's not really like a standout one or standout two in this. Um, I think that's what makes it particularly exciting to preview. Uh, the Ryanair is a horse that uh, is a horse. It's, it's a race that I've not really got right in recent years, I must say. Um, I didn't back Min in the race last year, and I've always looked for um, alternatives to the favourite. I think I was on a Plutard, um, and uh, was counting my money coming down the hill when Rachel Blackmore was tanking, but unfortunately she didn't get the job done. But yeah, a really competitive field and some uh, some names that I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into. Yeah, exactly, and there's no better place to start than, than the top of the market. We went from the bottom of the market down in, in the champion hurdle. We'll start from the top, and uh, there's a couple of horses in here of, of very similar uh, prices, but Alaho leads the betting at the moment at 5-1. to one. Uh, it's a working man's price if you want it at 5-1. to one. Uh, He was a little bit disappointing on his first two starts, ran a no race in the John Durkin that we didn't see. It mightn't have even been a race. Mm. Um, they they might have just stopped on the way, way around the back straight for a cup of tea and we wouldn't have noticed. Uh, then he was a little bit disappointing again in the Savills chase, but was back at it at Thurless last time out in the race that used to be the Kinlock Bray beating Ellie May. That looks strong enough for him. Were you taken by that performance, Josh? And do you think he's the worthy favourite and do you think he's got a fair chance? Yeah, I was taken by that performance. After the um, the RSA last year, he finished third um, in that epic race where Champ found something uh, out of nothing and uh, and stormed up the hill, beating Manella Indo and Alaho, who were, uh, I wouldn't say out on their feet, but definitely didn't have the engine that Champ had on the day. Um, and I think everyone suggested that Manella Indo and Champ would make good Gold Cup contenders and Alaho, the drop down and trip with Sue. Um, things haven't been plain sailing for him this season whatsoever. Um, but the last day I was impressed. I think they went quickly and, and he was the only one. I think Balco de Flo and um, Battle over Doyen dropped off significantly and couldn't stay with him. And he was the only one to, to stay up with the pace. And when Ellie May, Ellie May came to challenge, he'd been ridden patiently, he went away again. So I would say that performance hasn't got enough credit. I, I, I seem silly to say that given he is favourite for the race. I just think that that performance was particularly good and um and people were, were crabbing him after saying that he wasn't that impressive um beating ellie may who, who's now short price favorite for, for the mayor's chase a lazy enough sort of horse actually uh when he goes out in front but i know an awful lot of people would have really fancied this horse to have won the marsh novices chase last year uh, it, it's one of those we said it on the handicap video where we're not claiming it in any respect uh, to be any more knowledgeable than trainers and owners but mm. Alaho running in the RSA last year was one that I think an awful lot of people just couldn't get their head around yeah. when he looked so much suited to the marsh he's this strong travelling two and a half miler and he's just always seemingly you know, not gotten home over three miles. He must show something at home that's convincing Willie Mullins, the master trainer, that yeah. he needs three miles. Because in his races, you couldn't comprehensively say he's ever stayed. Definitely not. It might be that the lazy style of racing that he does have that you suggested earlier. Uh, another one that Willie's going to send to the race, or second favourite for the race, is Min. Really not the most ideal prep, was it, at the Devon Racing Festival? What did you make of that run? And, and what did you make of, of what Patrick had to say after? Yeah, very very hard to know. It was a very unlike Min performance. I know his jumping sometimes can be a bit exuberant, actually, uh, almost over-exuberant, but he's never put in as bad a, a round of jumping as he did there. And 
I, I think it's a brave man that would be probably backing Min for this race now off the back of that. He, is, he isn't getting any younger and there's probably more depth to this race than there was last year. I was glad he got his day in the sun last year. There was no horse more deserving. He obviously came up against a peak Altior for three or four years on the spin, which is a... A really almost harsh thing on a horse. It's a little bit like, you know, latest exhibition with monkfish, these sort of horses that yeah. you're there going, they deserve to be winning grade ones, but they're not. I don't know, I just couldn't be backing him with any sort of confidence, and I think Willie Mullins might have two better options in the race than him this year. I'd like to know how many horses have been pulled up in their prep run um, and won on, and went on to win a grade one at the Cheltenham Festival. I can't imagine too many. So it's not ideal prep whatsoever. Um, the third favourite, Imperial Aura, the same price as Min. I spoke to, to Kim Bailey in the week and, and he said it was a, a freak incident last time out. And um, uh, when, when he fell at Kempton, all is well. Not ideal prep for the race. And uh, he was so impressive at Ascot. And I think people really thought this horse is a real deal and he can really step up to the plate. Um, again, he's done he, he's done very little wrong in that run. I think it was a freak accident. I think one of his, his best assets, it sounds ridiculous, is his jumping. Um, but in every start before, he, he jumped electrically. And, and when he has that connection with, with David Bath, who's an absolute nutter of a jockey, he's the bravest man I, I, I think I've, I've ever seen ride a horse. He just goes full pelt, wing, 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 or doesn't wing them and loses the race. Um, so it's an all or nothing with David Bass. I think that's probably a, a documentary title in that. I don't know where from. Um, but I think Imperial Aura, he's a, he, he's a fascinating runner in the race. He's just not had the most ideal prep. And with these big grade ones, I am looking for those horses that have had good prep going into it. Yeah, exactly. Look, if you're saying Min hasn't had a good prep, this isn't a good prep either. And there's a couple of horses that we'll come on to also who haven't had massively great preps mm. uh, for this race as well. Uh, Imperial or it, it was, as you say, a freak accident. You, the last thing you would have expected him to have done uh, was, was do that at Kempton. It looked as if he almost had jumped a shadow and uh, more than anything. He just took off a long way from it. But as we've seen and uh, with Manella Indo, who fell in the, the Savills chase at Christmas time, you know, and an awful lot of people, myself included, said uh, after that race, that was the last thing you'd expect him to do. But then his next run, it was as if he was remembering that. And you'd have to bear that in mind with Imperial Aura. The one thing, and I'm a, a massive fan of him, actually, Imperial Aura, because I loved the, the Simply the Bets Imperial Aura form from last year. But you look at the, the, the real crux of his form, even from this year. He went up to Carlisle, he won the Colin Porter, uh, and he beat Windsor Avenue two and a half lengths. Now, Windsor Avenue is a, a massive cliff horse of mine. And he hasn't done it in handicap company. He then won, went to ask God. He beat Real Steel, who um, who didn't perform well and hasn't performed for Paul Nichols and Itchy Fees, who's now back over hurdles because he can't jump. Again, form that isn't Ryanair worthy, and we haven't seen this horse win a Grade One or even run in a Grade One. So how are we to know? Is he actually quite as good, or has he been just visually impressive? in smaller races and I know you were not so keen on Manila Indo for the Gold Cup because you thought he won a few tin pot graded races I would swing that into saying that Imperial Aura potentially has won a few tin pot graded races himself next in the market the non Renault bet market is Surname now he's going to run in the Ascot Chase he won't run here if he does run at Cheltenham it'll be in the Gold Cup but I think he's going to run at Ascot and then go for the Melling Chase at Aintree um, so next we bring on a Fakir do de re. Now, um, I wish that we'd started this channel or started these new videos um, a little while ago because I backed Fakir Do de re at 33 to 1 anti post for the race. It seems like after timing, and, and I'll probably get drilled in the comments for it. But um, I backed him on the basis that it was, it was a classy juvenile and uh, he, was, he was fourth in the Supreme as a juvenile, and, and that's did, tricky, put it that way. Uh, he beat Melon on chasing debut. And when stepped up, uh, his only run actually over two and a half miles was in the Drimmore, and he won uh, by 22 lengths, beating Ronald Pump. I know Sam Crow did come down in the latter stage of the races, and I, I, don't, I don't think you could put a definitive answer of who was, would, would have won that race, um, but obviously wasn't ideal, and, and the form looks a lot better when you beat Ronald Pump by 22 lengths in a grade one. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, on the racing post um, on his page, it looked really nice, and, and, and I'm sure Joseph O'Brien isn't complaining. Uh, but second to Notebook, 
Then in the Irish Arkle, second to put the kettle on in the English Arkle, he's sort of knocking on the door. It was pulled up over three miles. I think they tried him at three miles and it just didn't work. I don't think he stayed the trip and I don't think he enjoyed it massively. Um, but there was a cracking run behind Shaq and Boursois in the Dublin chase at the Dublin Racing Festival. And, and that form worked for Min last year. Finishing second to Shaq and doesn't it, seem, it seems fashionable now when going into a Ryanair. Um, that's what everyone wants to do. Finish second behind Shaq and, and go on and win over two and a half. I do feel that Fakir Uderi is two and a half miler. I don't think he's got the speed over two and I don't think he stays three. I think two and a half is, is right up his street. Sit off the pace. Do you hold him up? Do you go forward? I really don't know. Um, but I just think that he's got a brilliant chance in a Ryanair chase. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, you've made an extremely compelling uh, case for him. He's not a horse that's maybe ever quite done it for myself. Uh, if people actually watch the uh, Horse Racing Ireland videos on YouTube, they do little kind of three furlong home uh, of, of each race. And if you look back at the Drinmore that Fakir Duderith uh, won, if you zoom in uh, very close to the final fence, you'll see me there actually with my head in my hands. I'm actually doing this one. Uh, right at the final <laughs> fence, having backed Sam Crow for the race. I thought he would have smashed him that day, to be honest. My my worry with Fakir Duderi, he's a lovely horse. Uh, he, he's likely to run a good race. But you mentioned there that he's knocking on the door. And I do have a theory with Fakir Duderi in hot grade one contests. He's just never going to quite be up to it. And that he's always yeah. going to find one or two too good. So would it surprise me if he ran a big race, came second or third? No, it wouldn't. It would surprise me if he actually knuckled down to put his head in front. I think he should have won the Arca last year. He made a... Like, he is actually fundamentally a very good jumper. But he made a lazy jump at two out. to mm. put him on the back foot. Still had a chance after the last. But he kind of hung fire with 100 yards to go. And kind of went, yeah. you know what, I'm okay. I won't win this race. And that yeah. would concern me about him winning it. He's not the biggest horse in the world. But he really attacked his fences. And I think that's what interests me. And, and at 12-1, to 1, like you said, it wouldn't surprise me if he ran a big race. And I think as an, as an each-way player, I think he's got a huge chance. And, and a huge chance of maybe, out of all the each-way angles, going on um, to, to potentially win the race. Uh, St. Calvados, 10-1. to 1, He looked like he was going to be a massive price coming into it. Uh, Travelling so well under Gavin Sheehan last year. He didn't get the job done. What did you make of that? And what did you make of this performance this season? Yeah, well, it was a serious performance in the Ryanair last year. Completely... Uh, going against the price he was. He travelled into the race super and I'd say probably Gavin Sheen, if he had the ride again, uh, potentially would have thought he might have won the race. He he tried to sneak up Min's inside. He then made a mistake at the last and, and didn't quite reel him in as a result. This year, I thought he ran a stormer in the King George. I thought he ran a brilliant race up until around three out. He was plenty keen uh, and and then, then uh, just faded out of it into fourth. But... I think that run can be upgraded. He's obviously going to be stepping back down to 2-5 here. Obviously another horse though that's coming into this race off an unseat uh, at last time out in, in the rearranged Cotswolds chase at Sandown. I don't know what on earth they were doing running him in the Cotswolds chase over 3 mile 1. He didn't stay in the King George. If he's not staying in the King George he's not going to stay up the Sandown Hill on heavy ground past Native River. Uh, I thought that was bizarre placing. Uh, personally and it didn't work out he's unseated and he puts you on the back foot you can't rule him out of the race at the same stage because he didn't come into the race last year with a particularly fashionable profile he was actually beaten in a course and distance handicap uh, before running a, a, such a good race so and Harry Whittington's horses are probably just about turning the corner having had a, a fairly horrible year he's actually a, a very good young trainer Harry Whittington but it just hasn't happened for him this year I think there was a bug in the yard early in the season uh, but they are beginning to turn the corner which would obviously give him more of a chance but it would probably take more of a leap of faith to, to back him after an unseat and, and not staying in the King George I think he's had a hard enough race in the King George and then and then on the deck halfway down the back at Sandown can't be ideal uh, but I'd give him more of a chance than the horse I'm going to pose to you now uh, which I really want to just nip in the bud for this Ryanair because I can't give him any chance and it is Mr. Fisher. Can you please give me your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I don't think he won the Ryanair. Um, I think that he is a good horse. I think he's almost a, a bit of a top-notch, um, a Lamy Surge 
They're going to keep knocking the door on these races. He'll probably win a couple of Peterborough chases uh, down the line, but he's never going to win a Ryanair. He wouldn't be for me, even at the prices. I, I love the horse. I actually backed him uh, for the Supreme the year that he finished down the field, and, and it was disappointing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to win this. I just don't think he's good enough. And I just don't think that he'll be good enough on the day. Two horses that I do want to chat about um, are Sam Crow and Mellon, who, uh, who, who were first and second in the marsh last year. Now, I like Mellon out of the two, but Sam Crow is 14 to 1, no runner, no bet. I can promise you now, watching this, if he runs in the race, he's going to be 6 to 1 or under, I think he'll be. He's a people's horse. People will back him. They did it in the marsh last year. And he's not going to be 14 to 1. So if you fancy him for the race, now is the time to do it. I think he's 20 to 1 William Hill as well. I don't like him, but Mellon, he's a bit of a nearly horse. He, I think one day, one day, it's going to sound crazy, he's going to have his day. Um, and it's predicting when that day will be. He loves Cheltenham. Um, I think you can almost discount all of his form um, prior to Cheltenham. He always turns up regardless of, of, of what profile he has going into the race. In, in, in the first race, the race at Christmas at uh, Leopardstown. If he could run that race at Cheltenham, I think he's going to be very difficult to beg back. Uh, look, he'd be a horse I'd like more at, in the race than Fakir Duderi. I think he's actually probably more value uh, at 12 to 1. I think you can still get Mellon. I think this is definitely the race he's going to be running in. He's not going to run in anything else. Uh, just the only thing I, I can't make head nor tails of with these Willie Mullins horses is that Mullins does have three in the race. That in an ideal world, all three are making all. Mm. Or certainly sitting very, very handy. So, like, do they cut each other's throats off? Does somebody <laughs> adopt different tactics? You, you, we said earlier, Alaho is probably best two and a half miles from the front. Mellon certainly is best at two and a half miles from the front. And Min is usually best at two and a half miles from the front. Is it just going to be three in a line? And are these Mullins horses going to stay there? <laughs> Potentially so. I see Mellon running a big race. Uh, I think if the if the amateur jockey thing is all grand, I'd say uh, Patrick Mullins will ride him. I think Paul Townend will be on Alaho. Uh, I'm not sure who will that, that will leave on Min, uh, if Min's there as well. Th those are complicated jockey bookings, uh, as they always are. Maybe you know a Danny Mullins or a Brian Cooper might get a, a really good spare, uh, like they sometimes can do. But... Mellon is the type of horse that, that will run well, I believe. Uh, he's certainly one to be back in each way. You know, he, he is the type of horse. I think he's now been second at four consecutive champion, or, uh, Cheltenham festivals. That's a seriously good uh, effort. <laughs> he's like Min. He does deserve a day in the sun. I wouldn't be quite as convinced that he'll get it. This time, 12 months ago, I remember I got absolutely heckled uh, for putting up Sam Crow for the marsh. He was around 16 to 1 at the time. It's very similar to what it is now, actually, where, as you say, I think you're bang on. People love Sam Crow. Uh, I think it's just, he was the original hype horse. Like he was what Envoy Alain has turned out to be. Uh, he, he was meant to be that good. Uh, and I think everyone has had a soft spot for him since. He did win the Valley Moor when every man and dog had backed him a couple of years ago. And he obviously won the marsh last year. I'm going to get abuse for saying it. I think he's not a bad bet each way in this race. Especially 14-1 to non-runner no bet. I see he's entered in the weekend in the Red Mills chase at Gorham Park. I'd actually prefer to not see him again. I know he's coming, therefore coming in off the race. Having been pulled up uh, at Christmas time. But he was stuffed by Faheen at Christmas time this time last year. And came into the race fresh. Better ground and a wind operation. This has been the plan for this horse ever since winning the marsh. Obviously, the owners are Ryanair. They'll want him to run really well. He is a funny horse, very hard to predict. But if you're willing to take a, a bit of a leap of faith, I think the price gives you the opportunity to take a leap of faith. 14 to 1, you know, it's not like he's 7 to 1. If he was 6 or 7 to 1 right now, I wouldn't advise anyone to go near it. But you're getting a juicy enough price that you can back each way and... If you're a brave man like I was last year, uh, you, you might take it and, and fingers crossed a bit of better ground might see him to best effect. I, I, I'm certain he will go off a lot shorter than 14 to 1 if he runs. So oh, There's plenty of horses in this race where you look at them and go, I could make a case, but <laughs> mm, <laughs> tricky one. 
Um, and I think Melon, Samka and Fakir Didri all come under that bracket. Um, Melon, for me, if he jumps as well as he did in last year's Marsh, goes from the front um, and has has the freedom to really go from the front like he did at Christmas at Leopardstown. He's going to be extremely difficult to peg back and... and um, he just simply didn't get the trip that day. However, over two and a half, you can ride him aggressively and you know that he'll stay that distance. So it's fascinating. I do think that there is value opposing those at the head of the market. I think Fakir, Mellon and Sam Crow potentially are better each way plays. Alaho still has a few questions to answer. Min has plenty of questions to answer. Likewise with Imperial Aura, surname simply will not go. And St. Calvados hasn't had the most ideal preparation in the world and it would surprise me if Mr. Fisher is good enough. Um, so they're the three that I would probably take that might be the angle at the moment uh, it's a tricky one to work out though but thank you very much for listening to us and, and watching us if you did like the video please hit that like button subscribe if you are new and let us know your thoughts on the Ryanair chase down below we don't claim to be experts we're simply a, a two fans of racing talking about the racing and then hopefully you enjoy it just like us um, so yeah thank you very much and, and we'll see you in the next video